Well, to help us unpack and make a bit of sense of uh, some of these mixed messages from the South African government, we're now joined uh, via Zoom by United Democratic Movement Deputy President and Member of Parliament, Ngabayomzi Kwankwa. Thanks so much indeed for joining us and welcome to the programme. Uh, Peter, thank you very much for having us and good evening to the viewers at home. Was it a surprise for you to hear the Defence Minister um, give a different message to the president uh, on Sunday? Well, it, uh, it sums up the response, the very weak nated response by government to what has been happening in the country over the past couple of days. The question that South Africans must ask themselves, if the president knew that uh, as far back as Friday that it was an insurrection, why did the government then uh, wait a couple of days and only responded to it 48 hours later while the police uh, were battling, uh, struggling literally to be able to contain the situation. We are not surprised. Why? Because in the majority of instances, as you have seen, even when it comes to other policy proposals of government and policy programs, usually the right hand does not necessarily know what the left hand is doing. What we are concerned about is that instead of us being uh, worried about semantics, it's important, firstly, to, to coin it appropriately, to, to pin it down properly, to say, what are we talking about in trying to map the way forward? But we must not, we must not try to wish away the root causes of what actually ended up happening last weekend. If it was an insurrection, the political seeds were planted shortly before President Zuma was arrested. Uh, the government was caught flat-footed. There was no response. The other critical issue here, Peter, is that whether you agree with people's political grievance or not, when you're a president, you're a president of everyone, including those who are misbehaving. I do not believe that because the, the few were misbehaving, there was millions of South Africans in other provinces and other parts of the country were behaving. I don't believe that those who were misbehaving at the time, uh, President Ramaphosa was not their president. We missed an opportunity to be able to address and talk to them, to appeal and call for come, but also implement other political strategies mm -hmm. rather than sitting back and coming up with fancy ways of conceptualizing the problem. Do you think that there was an insurrection? Because, again, that will determine the level of response. Well, clearly what happened is that there, there, there was an incitement of people to... Uh, to, to behave in violent ways towards the state. Not necessarily, it's difficult to tell whether the intention at this point in time was to overthrow the state, but I think there was just massive economic sabotage to try and uh, undermine the work of, of the current government, whether people like it or not, but to also inflict harm on the South African economy. Whether some the South African government decides to term that as an insult, what would be that the press received, I'm sure, intelligence it was a well coordinated political program sabotage the economy uh, yeah, some of them their message across obviously there were elements that uh, that also hijacked the program but if you look at the extent of the violence if you look at the people who are coordinating it on social level then tomorrow we must we must go to another place and make them feel make them feel of but the security cluster did not respond even to those threats that were made public which you don't understand as to why the government was caught flat footed or were were made in public in the build up to the arrest of Zuma and shortly after President Zuma former President Zuma rather was arrested. So you must blame this on President Ramaphosa, but we must also not wish away or try not to achieve the problems you saw. There's what terms of unemployment and inequality in South Africa, where two nations, country, where you have one set of uh, sort of pe set of people or society that lives in extraordinary levels of wealth while others are extremely poor. You must also consider that if you continue to exclude the majority of South Africans from the economic activity or mainstream in the country, you are at some or other point going to face similar challenges where because they don't identify even with the assets that you claim belong to their communities, they don't identify with the malls because some of the malls 
employ in the majority of instances uh, undocumented and illegal migrants, not because they want them to work, but because they are pushing the profit motive and excluding other people. These are challenges that we must discuss and say, how do you address the socioeconomic challenges that that there are millions of South Africans who are uh, occupying and very little address to these issues. I have... They, 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 they are saying, as it is new, that there does need to be an economic endeavor in South Africa to develop a new economic blueprint for Africa. Because if we don't do that, what you saw in some of the parts, or some of the parts of the country, some parts of the country, which was motivated to some extent by poverty, we are going to see it spreading to the other parts of the country without condoning looting and the violence mm. that we saw. But we need to be honest about some of the challenges that face the country. There are commentators that suggest that um, the infighting in the ANC is what we're seeing playing out on our streets and uh, in our economy. And earlier on, you said that, you know, sometimes the left hand doesn't know what the right hand is doing. And one can understand that if maybe the tourism minister doesn't know what the defense minister is doing. But here we have a minister in the security cluster who is coming out and saying things different to what we believe the other security cluster uh, uh, um, team were saying. Does what we see playing out here, is that symbolic of what, what's playing out in the party? In other words, is what the party drama, is that also playing out in government? Well, yes, quite correct. It's the same minister that said the army would not be sent out. The army would not be dispatched to actually try and calm the situation down. Not surprised. What you see, the events that you've seen over the past year uh, in South Africa, are a culmination of all the political, sectional battles of the African National Congress that have not been addressed. And they are playing themselves out now on the national stage. They are becoming South Africa's problem because these leaders have not been challenges in turn, address their challenges, and then move on. But hence, you'll have a minister saying one thing and have a president of the republic saying another thing and have a minister and the presidency trying to do some damage control of that issue. And that is why probably this faction of Beth is a contributing factor to what we saw last week, where there was an absence, since the, 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 the as were conspicuous with their up. This folding fastly in case, and then also went to parts of, of you didn't see Minister Peggy Taylor was always at the forefront of crime fighting strategies. You didn't see any of the ministers trying to calm the situation down. Hence, we're saying that the president thought that he could only solve the problem by talking to South Africans and the nation at union buildings in his air conditioned office, instead of deploying senior government leaders on the ground at the time, deploying members, senior members of political parties, deploying members of parliament who are public. Go back to constituents and say, let's talk to our people. That is how we try or manage to quell the 2015 xenophobic violence when it fled up in different parts mm -hmm. of the country. You will recall that we are the party that made a recommendation, which was accepted by the Speaker, for Parliament to be closed in order for a member to be sent to various constituents. That is that the security cluster, the, the police, unfortunately, were sent to the front lines of trying to manage what appeared when it started as a political problem because politicians failed to provide leadership. It's as simple as that. What do you think we should be doing now? It seems as if the worst is behind us, but I suppose vigilance is still quite important. Well, the solution to this problem would require a multi-stakeholder approach. We have also always called for this. It's important. I think it's trivial or not. People think it won't take us. It's important for us to develop an economic blueprint for South Africa that we can agree upon. The pillars of what needs to be done to try and redress past imbalances, reduce levels of poverty, make sure the young people participate in the market. Uh, because you can't have a situation where approximately 10% of people are unemployed, they are completely excluded.
in the economic setup, and you expect that you are going to have durable peace and stability in the country. You're to experience challenges of instability if the majority citizens can't be excluded from the current economic setup and the current economic arrangement. The other issue is whether you agree with people's political or not, it's important for us leaders to acknowledge that, discuss it with people, and tell people exactly why we are where we are today, limitations of what we can do are, and what can be done in trying to make the way forward. But also, it all the make to that sick. community levels to understand what structures, what how do we change means of production or in growth. You can also cannot have a situation where President Ramaphosa willy nilly announces that you close down closing down certain sectors, but the announces put in place to try and make sure you support the sectors that you close down. Now levels of poverty, for example, we're already in a very the COVID nineteen and the lockdowns that have uh, that requires us to do different things. I would like to also hear that they started about the introduction of the basic income grant. Any people who follow parliamentary debates will tell you that it's the opposition, sister opposition parties, ourselves included, that have been pushing for it. We do not know took forever discussion around the modalities of how that implemented. But what we saw in case of the part that has to do with poverty and socioeconomic challenges forces us to either implement implementing a basic income grant sooner and later. Uh, so that discussion is around. All right, so Mr. Kwankwa, we're going to have to leave it there. Thank you very, very much indeed uh, for joining us and uh, your thoughts greatly appreciated. Thank you for your time.